skeletal system consists of two types of connective tissue, cartilage and bone. Connective tissue is either embryonic connective tissue or mature connective tissue. The mature, the connective tissue proper, loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, and there is another type of connective tissue which is supporting connective tissue, is cartilage and bone. The liquid connective tissue, the blood and lymph. So today we are doing the supporting connective tissue, the cartilage. Let me remind you before we start with the cartilage, let me remind you of the properties of connective tissue. Connective tissue has cells and matrix. And you can see here, the cells are widely separated from each other. They might connect, but they are generally widely separated by an interstitial matrix, wide spaces. And the matrix contains fibers and chemical substances. So there are collagen fibers, there are elastic fibers, and there are reticular fibers. So this same plan is present in cartilage. And as you will find, there are cells, there is a matrix, and there are fibers. The change in the physical properties is because of the different chemicals that are present in the matrix. But the design is almost the same. So let's start with the cartilage. Cartilage consists of cells. And these cells, there are blast type of cells and site type of cells. So this is cartilage, that's why the cells are chondro, chondro means cartilage, so chondroblasts. So they start as chondroblasts, these cells have the ability to divide and lay down matrix. So the chondroblasts divide, form more chondroblasts, lay down matrix until they become imprisoned in the matrix. And because this matrix is jelly-like matrix, so they become imprisoned in the matrix and in spaces or lakes, small lakes called lacuni. Lacuna means small lake. And so they become chondrocytes. When they are chondrocytes, they will lose the ability to divide. They will not be able to lay down more matrix, but they can maintain the matrix. So we have chondroblasts and we have chondrocytes. And there is a matrix. The matrix consists of collagen and elastic fibers. And we will see that there are different amounts of collagen and elastic fibers and different types of cartilages. And there is a ground substance, chemicals. And here the chemicals, and the main chemical is called chondroitin sulfate. Probably you have heard of this chemical before, chondroitin sulfate. Sometimes you will find it in the boxes of supplements that you find them in uh, shops. So they use it to replace the worn and torn cartilage, chondroitin sulfate. The difference here between cartilage and connective tissue proper is that it is avascular. Usually connective tissue is highly vascular. And he, so this one lacks blood vessels and not only blood vessels, but it lacks the nerves. The nerves and blood vessels are only present in a fibrous tissue, a dense irregular fibrous tissue that uh, covers the cartilage and called perichondrium. So this perichondrium covers the cartilage not the, all the cartilages, like for example, articular cartilages at the site of articulation, they are not covered by the perichondrium. So the cartilage, according to this structure, is resilient, can endure more stress than the loose or dense connective tissue. As I mentioned that there are different types of fibers in the cartilage. So it's either hyaline cartilage when it contains thin collagen fibers, or it is a fibrocartilage when it contains thick bundles of collagen fibers, or it is elastic cartilage when it contains elastic fibers predominantly. So therefore we have three types of cartilage. Let's start with the first type of cartilage and this is the hyaline cartilage. This is the most abundant type of cartilage in the body. Hyaline means glassy because under the microscope you will not be able to see the fibers in the ground substance. The fibers are thin and tiny. So it looks like glass, transparent glass. So that's why it's called hyaline. In fact, most of the skeletal system in the embryo and the fetus is in the form of cartilage. Most of the skeleton, I cannot say all, but most of the skeleton starts as a template of cartilage, of hyaline cartilage, that later on will change into bone. 
So that's why it's uh, abundant in the fetus. Also in the adults, it is present in several locations. So it is present like in the C-shaped rings of the trachea to make them patent, always open. We need the trachea always open for inhalation. Also, it is present in the nose, hyaline cartilage, the movable part of the nose for protection. And also, mainly it is present in the body as articular cartilage. So the articular surfaces of joints where the, the bone here uh, has smooth areas and these are covered by cartilage. The cartilage is called articular cartilage because it is present in a joint, in an articulation. Most of it, not all of, is hyaline cartilage. So, so it provides a, a smooth surface to reduce friction. And at the same time, it is, as I said, it endures stress more than the, even the dense connective tissue. So that's why it is there in the cartilage, to reduce the stresses and to reduce the uh, friction. Unfortunately, this cartilage, I would like to remind you, it is avascular and it does not have nerve supply. So with aging process, the wear and tear that takes place in the cartilage in the joint then this will result in destruction of the cartilage. The patient is called osteoarthritis or osteoarthrosis, but the problem is that the patient is unaware of it until the destruction reaches the bone, which is sensitive. So at that point, it, the, the damage in the cartilage is extensive. And again, unfortunately, the cartilage is not easily repaired because it doesn't have blood vessels. So again, I repeat, cartilage does not have vessels, does not have nerves. The second type of cartilage is called fibrocartilage. And as the name indicates, it contains a lot of collagen fibers. It looks like a dense, regular connective tissue. A lot of collagen fibers, but here, in between the collagen fibers, it is not only fibroblasts, but there are lacunae of cartilage. Of, of chondrocytes. There are chondrocytes as well. So you expect that this cartilage is very strong, not hard, but it is strong. And uh, so it is used, for example, it is located in the intervertebral disc between the vertebrae, where most of the weight of the body has to be transmitted. In some of the joints of the body, like in the knee joint here, the fibrocartilage, in addition to the uh, hyaline cartilage that covers the articular surface, some of the joints like the knee joint, as an example, you see it here, there is another cartilage within the joint cavity. And this is fibrocartilage. There is one also in the temporomandibular joint. Fibrocartilage is present in the symphysis pubis. So um, it is present in several places in the, in the body, but it is not the predominant type of cartilage. It causes rigidity and strength because of the fibers, the, the bundles, thick bundles of collagen fibers that it has. Now, the other type of cartilage, the third and last type of cartilage is the elastic cartilage, and it contains a network of elastic fibers, for example, present in the cartilage of the auricle of the ear, so that when the cartilage is deformed, it can return back to its original shape. Of course, this is not that important, the presence of cartilage in the auricle of the ear, so the oracle of the ear is elastic cartilage, just to remind you, that, because sometimes there are tricky questions. So uh, this is elastic cartilage, but, but this one is hyaline cartilage, and the nose is hyaline cartilage. But the most important elastic cartilage in the body is present at the beginning of the respiratory and digestive passages, and it is called the epiglottis. It is leaf-shaped cartilage, leaf-shaped, I mean, it looks like this like a leaf of a tree. So if you look at it from the anterior side, if you look at it from profile, it will be like this. And it will close. And then because it is elastic, it jumps back to open because it's elastic cartilage. And this happens all the time when we swallow. You can see it here. It's at the beginning of the larynx. So when you swallow, food and drink will pass over the cartilage. It will not pass into the larynx or, or the trachea because this is closed at that time. But immediately after swallowing, respiratory passages should always be kept patent. So it, once it's deformed, it can return back because of the elasticity that it has. So that's a very important cartilage here, the epiglottis.